The revolution will be televised. Why are you in your costume? This is a uniform. The future, I can see it. After all these years, back to the Matrix. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my Peacemaker trailer video. They just released a brand new teaser trailer for the John Cena Peacemaker series. This is going to be the HBO spinoff series from the Suicide Squad movie that we just got done watching. So there's a bunch of Easter eggs here. Obviously, a lot of funny WTF moments because that's kind of how Peacemaker rolls in the DC universe. But if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. I will be doing episode videos for it just like I do for the Marvel Disney Plus series. It's DC's first real big HBO series that they're doing that's a spinoff from the movies. They're doing that with a bunch of the movies now. The other big one that I'll also explain after I talk about the Peacemaker trailer footage is the Batman spinoff series that they're doing for Colin Farrell's Penguin character. That's right, we have two Batman spinoff series that are coming to HBO from Robert Pattinson's Batman movie. But careful for spoilers if you have not seen the Suicide Squad movie because I'll be talking about everything that happened at the end of that, the post credit scene, because that's meant to set up the Peacemaker series and give you an idea for what the timeline is going to be. So in the Suicide Squad movie post credit scene, they reveal that John Cena's Peacemaker character survived his big gunslinger standoff moment with Bloodsport at the end of the movie where it seemed like he turned on the team because he was on a secret mission within a mission for Amanda Waller. To prevent any evidence that would implicate the US government in a negative light with respect to what was going on with Starro in Cortal Maltese. So inside the Jotunheim base, if it wasn't clear, Peter Capaldi's thinker character explains that he was actually an employee of the US government and the US military experimenting on Starro in mind control, trying to find a way to weaponize mind control for the US government. So the unofficial secret of the Suicide Squad movie is that the actual villain is the US government and Amanda Waller, also kind of the villain of the movie. But because Peacemaker has such a hard on for justice and Lady Liberty, America as he says it, he's doing everything he can to bring peace to America, even if he has to kill every last man, woman and child to get it. So he was reluctant to kill Rick Flagg. He's like, please don't make me do this, but he does it anyway. So he just winds up being a bigger douchebag, a bigger dirtbag by the end of the film. The way James Gunn explained it is that Rick Flagg and even Bloodsport's character have this sort of hero arc where they become better characters over the course of the film. Like they start off being kind of despicable characters like you would expect anti-heroes in the DC universe, people that would be on the Suicide Squad, but by the end of the film they wind up having this big hero's journey where they become even better as people. Whereas Peacemaker has a sort of opposite arc during the film, like he starts out being kind of a despicable character but becomes even worse by the end, turning on the rest of the team, clearly choosing the darker path. But in the post credit scene, Amelia Harcourt and Steve Agee's John Economos are being forced by Amanda Waller to be Peacemaker's handlers during his new mission as he starts working for Amanda Waller on separate Black Ops missions. And as they complain, like they're being forced to do this because it's retaliation punishment for the team knocking out Amanda Waller when she tried to activate all the Suicide Squad members bombs, even though these two characters were not the ones that actually knocked her out. There were a couple other funny details that didn't really come across in the movie James Gunn explained about Amanda Waller's backstory. He said the reason why Rick Flagg got put on the bad Suicide Squad team was because at some point in the recent past Rick Flagg had made fun of one of Amanda Waller's outfits in the office like they'd been just walking around the prison on one of their normal days and he just laughed at her for whatever outfit she was wearing and that's the reason why Amanda Waller basically sentenced him to die putting him on this bad team. Just to give you an idea for how much of a grudge Amanda Waller will hold against people. Like, oh, you made fun of my outfit? Okay, time to die. Note to self, do not make fun of Amanda Waller's outfits. But when they're walking into the hospital to inspect him to see how he's doing, he recovers in the hospital for a little while longer. There's a small time jump. Then that's when the events of the Peacemaker series are going to pick up. And if it wasn't clear, there are going to be eight episodes of Peacemaker. They'll be around like 40, 45 minutes long. Obviously in this trailer footage you see Amelia Harcourt and Steve Agee's John Economos characters coming back. The other confirmed big comic book characters that we see in the trailer here are Vigilante played by Freddy Stroma. He's a new version of the character. They did a version of Vigilante on Arrow in the later seasons so obviously he's going to look way more hardcore than the Arrow version. 
These two characters sitting next to Peacemaker here in this booth while they're having their little meeting is Leota Adebayo and Clemson Mern. They're just other team members working under Amanda Waller at Argus. But the trailer footage starts with him putting a record on in the morning, like in his tidy whities just rocking out, as you do when you're Peacemaker. The logo on his record cartridge here that the camera focuses on is just a standard Audio-Technica cartridge, even though the triangles seem reminiscent of the Argus logo triangle. But you see him crank up the dial on his retro sound system, like Marty McFly at the beginning of Back to the Future, cranking the dials up, as if this is the way he wakes up every morning, just rocking out to his tunes in his underpants. This is obviously meant to be very reminiscent of the Suicide Squad movie when they're in Cortal Maltese, deep undercover in the jungle, like they were still trying to be super stealth at this point at the beginning of the film. And he took off all of his Peacemaker gear, the whole suit, pants, and all, while he was sleeping in his tidy whities They played it for a big WTF moment within a big WTF moment because the reveal happened while they were freaking out about King Shark trying to eat Ratcatcher 2. And to me, the funniest part of all of this, other than the huge oversized, ultra-muscled up John Cena looking completely ridiculous in Tidy Whities to begin with, the funnier part was that he didn't react to Bloodsport reacting to his current state of undress, as if he didn't even consider that the other members of the group might think that it was weird for him to be walking around in the jungle on a hardcore black ops mission with a group of trained killers in nothing but his Tidy Whities. And even though we're just seeing his living room here, we actually got a look at the outside of his house. This is what it looks like. It's a mobile home that he's just converted into a more permanent structure, but it's painted red, white, and blue because of course he would do that. Even his old muscle car is also painted with the American flag, like the douchiest version of Captain America you could imagine. In fact, I think John Cena described his character that way when they were first promoting the Suicide Squad movie a couple years ago. Like think of him as the douchey version of Captain America. And don't worry, I will talk about the muscle car in a second because it's pretty hilarious with the American flag and his pet bald eagle that he has in the back seat here. But zoom and enhance around his living room here. You can see the decor makes it look like his sense for aesthetics, design, fashion, just style in general is all frozen in the 1970s and 1980s. He does kind of feel like a crazier version of a classic 1980s action hero. Like imagine a crazier, deranged version of Arnold Schwarzenegger. But inside the living room, there aren't any particularly huge DC Easter eggs in frame here, just a lot of trash lying around and super old decor. I'm sure once they release more trailer footage and we get a look at the episodes, there'll be some bigger DC Easter eggs around the other parts of his house. I'm expecting them to release that bigger trailer at DC Fandom, and then they'll talk more about what's actually going on with the series. Because you don't really get a sense for the story during this early teaser trailer here, but James Gunn said the story gets way more crazy in sci-fi than you're expecting. But the next couple of scenes here with the meeting seems like it's all part of the same scene, like him getting out of his car and then going to a meeting with the rest of his team from Bell Reeve Prison in Argus. All of them working for Amanda Waller on these new missions. So just to talk about the car here, obviously there's been a lot of jokes made about this old timey muscle car. So if you couldn't tell, it's a 1970s Mercury Comet and James Gunn himself in the comments here called it a shifty car, like one of the worst muscle cars of all time. Like I said, Peacemaker is supposed to be a really sus kind of character. Everything about him screams douchebag. There's just something not right about him up top. You notice the license plates are Washington plates because that's where he lives. But even funnier joke here, the plates read Pissmaker as if his name is Pissmaker instead of Peacemaker. I'm sure there'll be a couple jokes about that during the episodes. But Amelia Harcourt calls him out for wearing his full Peacemaker costume with his gun in its holster in broad daylight. Like they're trying to keep a low profile and his costume is the opposite of that. Then the next scene seems very familiar. It's him having another shootout competition with Vigilante, the new character. You can only see part of his costume here, but it's meant to parallel the same shooting competition that he had with Bloodsport in the Suicide Squad movie. As you can see, he just tries to play up his superiority to Vigilante during this competition by making all kinds of funny trick shots and then shooting the peace sign into the block here to represent his name, Peacemaker. The other comic book characters that they've confirmed are a version of Judo Master. Robert Patrick is going to be playing Peacemaker's father, who's named Augie Smith. I'm sure he's going to be crazy. Amanda Waller briefly referenced his father when they were introducing him during the Suicide Squad movie. We'll probably find out about more of the comic book characters coming to the series when we get to DC fandom next month in a bigger trailer. But if you spotted any other big Easter eggs in this trailer that I didn't talk about during the video, just write them below in the comments. And like I said, I will do a bigger trailer video when DC Fandom gets here. So make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss any of those videos. In my full Marvel What If Episode 7 video, we'll post Wednesday just like normal. Everyone click here for my brand new Eternals trailer video for Kit Harington's Black Knight and Richard Madden's Icarus character. 
and click here for my Shang-Chi movie post-credit scene video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.